our topic now is real options. Okay? We're still talking about investments, so real options is still going to be about how to make right investment decisions, so in a sense it's a follow-up of, uh, of the discussion we just had about net present value and IRR. Okay? The difference is that we are going to incorporate options into our calculation. Okay? So far what we've done essentially is we've been assuming that the decision is all or nothing. So you either take a project or you don't, uh, you either replace a machine or you don't. Okay? But uh, in, in real life, investment projects are going to, to come attached with what we call a real option. Okay? So this could be an option to cancel the project, to abandon, it could be an option to modify. And a very important option that's actually going to be our starting point is that some investments actually create future opportunities. Okay? Rather than creating current cash flows, they create future opportunities to invest. So specifically, we're thinking about research and development, R&D. Okay? So let's start with that, actually. It's one of the most important applications of real option analysis, is how to, how to value R&D, how to make a decision about R&D expenses. Okay? If you think about R&D, you know, the very purpose of R&D is to create an option to invest in the future. When a company is uh, spending dollars, to do research to develop new drugs, for example, okay? the goal of the company is to uh, discover something that can, that, that, that can become a product, right? So, so the, the value of R&D is going to come from this, uh, from, from this creation process. Okay? Rather than creating future cash flows, you're, you're creating an option to invest. Right? So the, uh, le let's work with a specific example. Okay? Uh, and put, try, try to put some numbers and try to think about how we would value R&D, right? So suppose uh, a drug company has estimated the cost of researching a new drug, okay, that you're trying to develop, and this drug is going to cost $30 million, okay? It's a new diabetes drug, just to be uh, uh, concrete, okay? Question is, how do we compute the NPV of this R&D investment, right? Every time a company spends money, you know, and $30 million is not peanuts, right? Every time a company spends money, uh, we have to think about shareholder value, right? So is this, is this investment in R&D going to increase shareholder value, right? And we cannot just guess. We have to go on to, you know, go ahead, try to do the, 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 the calculations to come up with this NPV, okay? So how, we, uh, how would we model this? The first thing to notice is that the R&D is not necessarily going to generate a useful drug. Okay? So the R&D uh, may generate, you know, it's research, right? It's like research, like what I do for a living as well. Sometimes our projects work, sometimes our projects don't work, and we end up with nothing. Okay? So the first thing we have to think about is that the R&D only produces a, a, a useful drug with a certain probability. Okay? The way we're going to think about this is by you, uh, using a decision tree. Okay? So what you have here in the slide is a decision tree where you know, we're modeling the investment. So today you, you decide if you, take the, this in 30 million, if, you, if you take this investment, if you spend $30 million in research, there is a chance that you're going to develop a new drug, but there is also a chance that there's going to be failure. Your research is going to produce nothing, and no drug is going to be developed. Okay? So the first thing that the drug company has to estimate is this probability. What is the probability that we are going to end up in the right, in the right, uh, uh, in, in, in the right side of the, of the tree here, right? We want to be on the right side and the success side, okay? How can we do that? This is obviously going to be hard, okay? It's, it's especially hard for novel projects. Think about this. Research is going, is going on. It's probably something new something that is going to create value, something novel, okay? So it's not easy to estimate this probability, okay? But it doesn't mean that we shouldn't do it. We have to do it. If we're going to, uh, to figure out the NPV of the, of the R&D investment, we're gonna, we, we are, we are gonna have to do this somehow, right? The way that, that, comp the way that drug companies do it is by using experience, right? They've done uh, related research in other areas, in other drugs, or, you know, educated guesswork. Right? Here's some data that is useful. 
there is typically four phases to prove the safety and, and, and efficacy of a new drug. Okay? You start small, right? testing a few healthy volunteers. Okay? And then you know, some drugs already fail at this stage. 70% right? manage to go to phase two. Then on phase two, you increase the number of volunteers. Right? Again, a certain percentage goes to phase three. Right? Uh, phase three then is going to take a number of years. Right? That's uh, when you really start spending the dollars to, uh, to, to research this new drug. Okay? You go global, increase the test to thousands of patients. And then in phase four, you have to get approval from a regulator. Okay? Here in the US, the regulator is the FDA, the F Food and Drug Administration, that is responsible to approve uh, uh, the, uh, 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 you know, whether a new drug should be used in, uh, in uh, real life patients or not. Okay? So, you know, just by looking at these numbers, you see that the probability is small, right? Only 70% go through phase one, 33% go through phase two, then there are two more phases, right? So the probability is quite small, okay? For any individual drug, you know, it's going to be on, the, on the less than 10%, okay? Here, let's say that our probability is 5%, okay? So there is a 5%, the drug company estimates a 5% probability that this new drug is going to produce a success, that this research is going to produce a successful drug. And then there is a 95% probability that the drug will not be developed. There is going to be failure. Okay? It's a small probability. That doesn't mean that the R&D shouldn't be done. We have to do more calculations. Okay? The first thing we need to figure out is how much is the company going to have to spend if the R&D is successful. Right? Remember what we talked about in the beginning. The R&D is not generating cash flows immediately. The R&D is actually generating an option to invest. Okay? If you do R&D, what you're creating is you know, the right to spend money, if you want. So you're just going to spend more money to begin with. Okay? Uh, re uh, recently, I read a very interesting interview with the chief financial officer of a drug company here in the US called Paraxel International. And the CFO was uh, precisely describing this, uh, this process. Okay? And uh, one of the points that, that, that he made is that each phase requires an increasing investment and that once you get to, to the late phases, once the drug gets close to being su successful, the investments become very large. Okay? So it could cost $500 million uh, for a single drug to be developed. Okay? So let's say for our example that the required investment is $1 billion. Okay? So here we have the 5% chance that you're going to spend $1 billion. So far, this is not looking very good, right? Uh, all we've done is estimating the chance that we're going to spend more money, right? Of course, what we need to get at now is to figure out, you know, the cash flows that this investment is going to produce, right? So if the drug is successful, you spend a billion dollars, and then you're going to generate profits, okay? It turns out that uh, the, the, the regulators, I understand that developing a drug is a very costly process. It takes many years of research. It takes these you know, large investments. So uh, in many countries in, in the world, we have this uh, 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 concept of a patent. Okay? So the FDA will typically grant a patent for a certain number of years. For our example here, let's say it's 10 years. Okay? The patent creates a monopoly for the company during that period. So the company will probably have higher, higher profits because it's the only one that can produce exactly that drug. After that, competitors are going to be able to copy this drug. Okay? So how would we model that? There's going to be a two-stage cash flow process. right? Initially, the drug is going to generate high profits. Let's say here it's $200 million a year okay, for these 10 years. And then the cash flow is going to drop to $20 million, a year, uh, uh, $20 million a year in perpetuity. Again, the right uh, horizon to consider is typically an infinite horizon, as we discussed already in this model. Okay? Suppose then also that the discount rate is 6%. Okay? What we need to do now is to figure out the present value of these cash flows. Okay? At the point that the drug is developed, what is the present value of these cash flows? Okay? And yes, this is one more present value example, right? Practicing always great. Practicing is what makes perfect, both for guitar playing and for finance, 
Okay? So let's go on and do that. Okay? So here what you have are the cash flow as a timeline, right? So one, two, three, four, right? 200 million cash flow for the first 10 years, and then the cash flow drops to 20 million, right? I have the calculation here for you. Notice one thing, right? Because we have the infinite horizon, at the end, we're going to have to use the perpetuity formula, right? We have this $20 million cash flow that keeps going on forever, right? The discount rate is 6%, so we know we're going to have to use the perpetuity formula, right, to divide 20 by 6% to get the value of that, of that perpetuity at the end, okay? And then, uh, notice that if you apply the present value formula, the first cash flow is happening in year 11. This value is going to grow here in year 10, okay? The value of this perpetuity is going to accrue to the firm 10 years from now when, this, uh, when the patent expires, okay? It's as if the company were like selling the drug at that time and the value of the drug is 20 divided by 6%, okay? So you have that here. 10 years from now, okay, in addition to the cash flow of 200 million that the company is still producing in that time, okay? And then you have the other cash flows that we are discounting back. Again, you, you know, at this point you can do Excel. You can use Excel, right? You have to, uh, you, uh, you're going to have to apply the perpetuity formula at the end, but after you have figured out the perpetuity, you can definitely use Excel to calculate the present value of the cash flows, which here we got to be 1.658 billion dollars, okay? You are investing a billion, so what this means is that if the drug is success, if the R&D is successful, if the drug is developed, we are, we are forecasting, we are estimating, we are guessing, right? We are not sure, but we are guessing there's going to be an NPV of 658 million dollars, okay? So we can go back here and add that to our decision tree. So now we have all the numbers. If you invest 30 million, you have a 5% chance of generating a net present value of $658 million, okay? And then there is, you know, a 95% chance that you get nothing, right? We still have to think about one more issue before we do the final valuation, which is how long does it take, right? Research takes time, you know, like I said, this is one of the things I do for a living is to do research to write papers. I can tell you that each paper that, that, that I work on can take, you know, two, three, even four or five years to between the time you start and the time you complete. You know, research to develop a drug is similar, right? There's lots of people working, but it usually takes a few years to, to, to decide if the drug is going to be successful or not. So for our example here, let's say it's three years. What I'm saying is that, let's say that the length of this period between the 30 million investment and the, and the development of the drug is three years, okay? And now the question for you, try to, with this data, we've, we've, we've figured everything out except the NPV of the R&D, try to do the calculation yourself. And here it is for you, okay? So, that's how you would do it. You have the minus, the, the minus 30 in the beginning, of course, right? And notice that since there is only a 5% chance that you get an in, the, the positive NPV, we have to multiply the 658 million by, by 5%, right? There is only a 5% chance you get that. And then we have to, do, to discount by uh, uh, three periods, which was our assumption is going to take three years, okay? If those numbers are correct, we are getting an NPV of minus $2.37 million, okay? So we got a negative NPV for the R&D investment, right? What this means is that despite the large potential benefit of the drug, right, you could generate really a ton of money, but, you know, the R&D is just, uh, just not making sense for shareholders, okay? The risk of failure is too high. It takes too long to generate profit, okay? At this point, you know, what the company could do is to try to change this, the parameter somehow, right? Uh, in a real way, you know, not playing with parameters, not making optimistic assumptions, but what I would recommend is that the company should try to lower the cost of research. You know, is there a way of doing this research in a way that maybe is going to cost less than, than, than $30 million? 
Is there a way of getting results sooner? Any of these changes might uh, uh, cause the drug to become positive NPV and will definitely help the company. 